I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. So uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 4th uh, meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'm Chair Rachel Zemberry. Uh, this open meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely for the governor's extension of the remote meeting provisions of the executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We'll take a roll call vote or a roll call to ensure that everybody's here and can uh, hear me, starting with uh, Kim Lau. Uh, present. Eugene Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakalis. Present, but by phone. Okay, thank you. Steve Revelat. Uh, good evening. Good evening. And we have uh, two members of the Department of Planning and Community Development joining us this evening, Director Jennifer Reitz. Present. And Assistant Director uh, Kelly Lineman. Great, thank you. And welcome all this evening. So we have one agenda item tonight, and that is to review and finalize the report to 2022 special town meeting. Um, so what I'd love to do is ask either Jenny or Kelly to bring that up along with any revisions that uh, have been sent uh, by any of the um, board members ahead of this meeting. And perhaps if you could run through uh, those that you have compiled and, and received already, that would be helpful. And then we can uh, go through, um, actually, let's go through article by article. Um, maybe we'll start with the intro and then we'll go to article two. Um, and then at the end of the report, we'll see if there's a motion to um, approve and submit to special town meeting, either as amended or as submitted, depending on what came in. So uh, Jenny, I'll turn it over to you for article, for first of all, anything on the opening and then we'll move to article two. There is nothing in the opening now. Okay, um, I'm gonna just go <clears throat> scroll. <clears throat> this, this document actually merges two sets of comments that we received from you, Rachel and Steve. Um, and um, Okay, so we kept your comments in here. Okay. <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> so um, something that I flagged when I was reviewing this draft is that we said the, the, the article intended to add it to the I district, but we actually didn't carry that through. I spoke with Doug and he said that we could add it here um, in the table as a Y, which makes sense because the types of places where family childcare mm -hmm. takes place would be in a, potentially in the I district because we have single family homes and you know, it, private homes basically, which is where this is happening. Um, it, I think the reason we missed it is because there's simply nothing there right now. And we had been deleting SPs and turning them into Ys. Um, but this one re required us to ag actually add the Y. Um, so it, with your, if it's okay with the board, that was the one edit that references that particular comment. If we can add that, we can accept this change as part of when you accept the overall, you know, report. Actually, I don't. I would object to that change. I don't think family childcare belongs in the industrial district, and I think we need to reserve the industrial district for um, other uses. And I noticed that we didn't have a Y there, and I thought that was fine. And we voted it without the Y. And um, I couldn't agree that it belongs in the industrial district. I think that's not what we want the industrial district to have in it. And I'm not sure I want childcare next to things that are going to be in an industrial district. Okay. I'm just giving you the, the reasoning behind the comment from Rachel um, and the reasoning of you know how it came to be that uh, we're having this discussion to give you the background mm -hmm. and the types of locations that this happens, this type of use happens in, it, are those places exist in the industrial district already. 
Um, that said, Kelly did some research into the currently licensed uh, family child care facilities, which are all in residential districts. So just to, you know, perhaps to your point, creating a non-conforming, but just, just wanted to make sure that that was also clear to, to all. So anyway, for, for discussion, I, I'm, that was, that was the primary comment here. Is there anything else? Um, so Jean, we have to go back to Article Two and strike I from that uh, from the description. No, we we don't have to do that. But the warrant article is already filed. We we don't the warrant article can be bigger than whatever we decide to do. And so, as Jean said, we had already gone more narrow. We didn't do we don't have anything in the transportation district or the open space district. So we're, we we can't change the warrant article. It was already filed. What I, I guess what I'm asking is if you and Rachel's comment here is if you want to consider adding it to why to uh, the industrial district, this is the time to do it. And it is, according to Doug, fine to potentially add it here based upon the scope of the warrant article. So right. to be clear, I was I'm it. not specifically advocating for it. I was no, just noting just, the discrepancy for the for the right. board members. So correct. I appreciate your opinion. Um, perhaps we could go through and um, see what what others think. And I think if we don't have consensus, I prefer to um, have it remain as as is, given that this was um, voted unanimously in in favorable action um, when we reviewed it previously. So Ken. Um, you like to share any of your thoughts? I'm fine with leaving it out too. Okay. Um, Melissa? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have feelings either way for this in terms of leaving it out or putting it in. Um, did I hear correctly that there was research though that it is, it exists in industrial areas today? Was that it, accurate? It does not. The research was that there are currently no licensed um, family child care um, facilities in the industrial district. There are oh, residential exactly. districts today. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm fine leaving it, you know, as is then. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and Steve, your thoughts? I am also fine with leaving it as is. Okay, great. Thank you. So we will... Um, We'll leave this as is, and I'll run through again just to see if there are any other comments related to um, Article 2, starting with Jean. Um, no. Kim? No. Melissa? No. <coughs> no. Thanks, Melissa. Steve? Uh, nothing here, Madam Chair. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so let's move to Article 3 to see if there were any um, any proposed modifications? This is the only addition, which is this uh, language that was added to the discussion on the screen. I'm fine with that addition. Um, I'll run through and see if anyone else has um, any comments, uh, starting with Ken. Oh. I can I can't quite yeah let me read it can you can you go back to me afterward I yes absolutely it. Melissa so Melissa since you're joining via phone I'll just read it to you so okay, um, absolutely so it's in the last sentence um, of the main discussion point where it says the ARB discussed that like station locations the content of advertising or sponsor panels may be subject to select board review and um, and this is the added text approval and is not under the jurisdiction of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington. Okay. So, and you're asking if we're okay with that, correct? Yep. Or if it, so yep. this is, I believe, Steve, you recommended this, this clarification? Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. So, Based. which, um, so if, if you have no issues with that, or if you have any other comments that you'd like to make about the discussion points that were included in um, article, the article three report. Uh, no further comment, and that's I'm, I'm comfortable with this addition. Great, thank you, Melissa. Steve? Uh, nothing further. Okay, great. I'll return back to you, uh, to Jean. I don't know the answer about whether 
the content of the advertising or sponsor panels is not under the jurisdiction of the zoning bylaw because I haven't read the whole zoning bylaw sign section to see if that's true or not. So it's a little bit hard for me to make that determination without reading this. Can I ask Jenny for your um, your opinion on this, given that your, your department works probably the most closely with the signage uh, by law? I, I think that this is accurate. Um, we also, we uh, this is just the way that I did this. The word approval had been here. So it's just adding this addition beginning after the comma. It had just said subject to select board review and approval previously. So the, the proposal is to add and is not under the jurisdiction of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington. I don't know that it's necessary to state that. Um, for, that would be my own opinion. I don't think it matters one way or the other, but I, I don't, I do think that that's, that the, the, if it's only talking about the content of the advertising, I think that's true, but that might not exactly be clear the way that this clause is written. It sounds like this, you know, none of it is under the jurisdiction of the zoning bylaw, but mm. we're talking, it, you know, it, it reads that way. So we might wanna think about that, but Gene looks like he wants to talk. Go ahead, Gene. I, I agree that it's not really necessary um, to say what we're saying here. And I'm just quickly, skimming through the zoning bylaw. And it does say that signs that are prohibited and considered illegal includes any sign which advertises a business no longer in existence or a product or service no longer being sold except landmark signs. So theoretically, <coughs> content of advertising or sponsor panels under some circumstance is within the jurisdiction of the zoning bylaw, at least according to that one um, provision. And then, um, um, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm not really um, completely certain about that. Um, and the zoning bylaw makes a little distinction between non commercial and commercial messages. So I, I can't say for sure, but I'm concerned and I don't really think that clause is necessary. And I'd hate us to put something out and then later find that we do have some limited authority over that. Sure, I mean, I, I believe, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, that your intent was really specific to the advertising at these shared mobility stations as opposed to advertising in general across the signage by law. But I'm with Gene in that I, I think that the intent is clear without the modifier. I was fine with the with the modifier with the intent that I assumed that that you um, were, were pushing towards. But if you're okay with us striking it, um, if you feel that the intent is is strong enough, um, we, we can certainly do so so that it doesn't add more confusion. Well no, I brought that up I uh, suggested that change based on our you know, the discussion during the hearings over time, place and manner. Um, right. And you know our our ability to regulate you know, being limited to those qualities. Um, having said that, I I have no objection to striking it. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on Article Three? All right. Let's move to Article Four. Do you want is the decision to strike that? I'm sorry. Can sorry. I, yes. To okay. strike. Okay. I'll strike it. And there's no, there's nothing further, just so everybody is understanding. There's no, there were no uh, other edits. Right, so I just wanna run through and see if anyone does have any um, edits for article four who may not have submitted them. I mean, um, I mean the, in general, what's in this document <laughs> that I'm sharing. Right. So we've actually struck all. So th there is actually currently no amendments that we've accepted. Okay. Yeah, so, so um, go ahead. Do you want me to talk through this one? Uh, please. Okay. So this one, it we have a, a little clarification here in the discussion. Um, some minor mm -hmm. typographical and um, you know additions, changes, um, and that is it. Can you go back to that one? Can you explain that one? 
The one that's the zoning specifier. It's a Steve. Did you add this? Yes, I did. Um, zoning. Let me just let me think back to what the original was. So yeah, the original the original sentence was zoning has not codified existing conditions with regard to lot size, um, and I had to read that a few times <laughs> to get my head around it. Um, and I just wanted to. This is just an attempt to make it clear to for clarification where you know because we're talking about nonconformities here, so um, you know the zoning by law specifies what you can do in the future when you build something but it doesn't the what's in the bylaw doesn't necessarily reflect or align with what has been built prior to the bylaws passage Jean, do you have questions about that particular wording i i agree that with steve that that was a challenging sentence to um to parse through and i think if we can make it clearer for the audience at town meeting, it's probably a, a good thing. And if um, you have any other wordsmithing that you want to do, I agree with Steve. The only word I'm not sure about is reflect. Mm -hmm. But we can we can run through and see if mm -hmm. any anyone else has has thoughts on this. Ken? Nope. Uh, Melissa? Uh, no. And Jean. So, I don't know. I see where Steve is going on this. Um, the word future bothers me a lot because it covers, because zoning is for current and future development, um, not just for future development. Um, and um, I, I'm not sure the if a you could think of a current you could think of current a current nonconforming use since this is about this is a section on nonconforming uses. So the, you know, a current use could be either conforming or non-conforming. Um, you know, but if that use was begun prior to the adoption of the bylaw, then it's, you know, essentially allowed to continue. Would you guys be okay if you take out the word reflect and put in pre? Yeah, or something like that, the pre-existing conditions? So perhaps we could modify this. I'll throw something out here. Um, specifies requirements for, um, let's just take up future develop, um, you know, development and does not necessarily reflect pre-existing conditions. Yep. And well, and does not necessarily require changes to pre-existing conditions rather than reflect. Or reflect or require changes is fine. Or require changes to pre-existing condition. <clears throat> the other thing that you could do is you could, it's about non-conformities and why there's non-conformities. So the, the sentence could actually start with non-conformities exist because, and then it's explained in the rest of the sentence um, a little bit differently. And I'm, I'm, I'm I'm tripped up on either version of the, of the, the, the prior one and the, the new one might, might not exactly get us there. And I, I'm thinking about the, the town meeting member reading this. Right. You know, so it would be nonconformities exist because pre-existing conditions with regard to da 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 are not codified in the zoning bylaw. In current in the current zoning bylaw or something, I, I don't. It seems too much still. But I think you could say um, 
non non conform non conformities exist um, because zoning does not reflect or require changes to pre existing conditions with regard to. I mean, I think you could just take the whole what the zoning bylaw does for the future out of it, um, and just note just note that this isn't backward looking. Period. The end. <clears throat> you want to repeat that? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, because the zoning bylaw does not necessarily reflect or require changes to pre-existing. Sorry, sorry, you can, <laughs> um, yes. And then, yeah, that's perfect. Well, can we say non-conformities may continue to exist because sure. That's oh, whoops. Okay. I think we can make it simpler, but people may disagree by saying nonconformities may continue to exist because the zoning bylaw does not, and then take out everything before the word requires, so it says does not require changes to pre existing conditions. I'll just chime in here. That makes the most sense by just listening to this more so than reading it because it's, it's too tiny on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, like that. I would agree. Jenny, do you have any concerns with? No, I, I think that's perfect. I think that's what we were trying to describe and it was, and now it's much more clear. Great, thank you, Jean. Ken, do you have any concerns with that new wording? Oh. Steve? Fine by me. All right. Um, and then I think the other um, amended wording here was was just about um, typographical um, changes. All right, anything else on Article Four? All right, is there a motion to um, to approve the? the ARB's report to special town meeting um, as amended. A motion. I'll second the motion. All right, we'll take a vote starting with Kim. Yes. Jean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I am the yes as well. Thank you all. Uh, we will, this, uh, the report to special town meeting has been approved and we will submit it um, it will be officially submitted. The night of special town meeting is um, next Wednesday, May 11th. So we will um, submit the special uh, report to special town meeting at the beginning of the meeting, and then we will um, review those articles as they come up that that night. Rachel, are you going to do little videos for each of them, like you did for some? Yes. Of them? Yep. I recorded those yesterday. Terrific. Yeah. And so the other one, just so that you're all aware that I recorded that um, we didn't specifically vote on, um, but was in our um, was in our goals for the year was the appropriation request. I think it's um, Amendment six or excuse me, uh, Article 65 that was inserted at the request of the Redevelopment Board through the Department of Planning and Community Development for um, an appropriation for the uh, design guidelines for business districts. Um, so the, that I did record today. So there will be a, a video for that as well, but I wanted to make you all aware of that. Great. That that sure be posted. Posted. Yeah, that's good. Cause that was taken out of the consent agenda by somebody. It sure was. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, so we recorded all of them just in case things were taken out. So even those that have been taken out of the consent agenda um, from the zoning bylaw uh, proposed amendments have been recorded too. Great. All right, um, any other questions just about logistics for town meeting and special town meeting before we move to adjourn? Uh, okay. When are we gonna meet in person? Are we still meeting remotely for the next couple of weeks? Unfortunately, while town meeting is going on, we're going to need to because logistically, it's just too much of a challenge for Jean and Steve and if I need to, um, and Jenny and, and Kelly and myself or whoever needs to attend town meeting. Um, but as soon as town meeting is over, 
I think the, the plan was to begin meeting in, in person again. So that will most likely happen at one of our June meetings. I'm not sure this at this pace what meeting that will be, but we'll keep everyone posted. Okay, thank you. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so if there's no other business, uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn to town meeting? No motion. I'll second. All right, we'll take a vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And yes as well. Thank you all and have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. They drive.